So, you know, in this church, we don't believe in just sitting and uh, folding our hands. We believe in clapping our hands, lifting our voices unto the Lord. We believe in shouting amen. That's a good place to say amen. Amen. So, the word amen means so be it or let it be so. And so, whoever wrote this song, I'm telling you, is an absolute lyrical genius. And we don't even have to put the words up there because it's so simple. And it goes like this. Amen. 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 Everybody now. God's people shout amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, it's so good to have you in the house of the Lord. And we're going to ask you just to take a couple of minutes now to get out of your seats and welcome one another to the Lord. Find somebody you don't know so well and just say welcome to God's house today. Let's go ahead and do that now. God bless you. Come on, go ahead and get out of your seats and find somebody. Say, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> That's good. That's a good report. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Good to hear people in the house today. All right. Praise God. Well, some glad morning. When this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shores. I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away. Hallelujah, by and by, I'll 
fly away. Sing that again. Oh, I fly away, oh glory. I fly away in the morning when I rise. Hallelujah, by and by. I fly away when the shadows of this life have grown. I fly away like a bird from prison bars has flown I fly away oh I fly away oh glory I fly away in the morning when I rise hallelujah by and by Fly away, I'll fly away. Oh, I fly away, oh glory. I fly away in the morning when I rise. Hallelujah, by and by. I fly away. Just a Weary days and then I fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I fly away. Oh, I fly away. Oh, glory. I fly away. When I rise, hallelujah, by and by, I fly away. Oh, I fly away, oh glory, I fly away in the morning. When I rise, hallelujah, by and by, I fly away I'm gonna fly away praise the Lord Lord I thank you for a blessed hope that we have as saved born again spirit filled believers that one day Lord the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and everybody that is dead in Christ will rise first Everyone who alive and is and remaining on the earth will be caught up together with him in the air. And so we will be forever with the Lord. I thank you for that, God. I thank you that in spite of what's going on in this world, your people have hope. We have hope. And that hope is an anchor to our soul. Praise the Lord. Amen. Zing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now. Him found was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace. My fears relieve How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed Through many dangers 
Sinner's toils and snares I have already come to His grace. Say thus far, and grace will lead me home when we bend there ten thousand years, right shine. To sing God's praise Than when we first be gone Sing amazing grace Amazing grace How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now oh, I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Praise God for your amazing, amazing grace. Hallelujah. And Father, right now I pray healing over everyone that needs healing. Anyone that came in here today sick in their body, suffering in their body, I rebuke sickness right now in the name of Jesus. I command that every person's body becomes complete and whole by the finished work of the cross on Calvary. When Jesus cried out, it is finished, we declare that sickness is finished today. In the name of the Lord, I pray for our brother Wayne Bell Richard right now who needs a touch from God in his body. I pray for people that are in this house today that need a touch in their body. I pray for those, Lord, that have joined us online. I speak healing into their bodies. And right now I speak healing in the mental health realm, the emotional realm, healing right now by the blood of Jesus. Every chain broken right now by the blood of the Lamb. And we give you glory today. Let all God's people shout amen and clap your hands unto God. Amen. You may be seated today. So there's a song that when I was a little boy, I used to sing in my grandfather's tent crusades. And actually by force, I was five years old, we used to get on a chair. By the way, we still own those chairs today. We own those chairs. We had about a thousand of them. We've been sewing them into different ministries. But I used to get on that chair and grab my grandfather's Bob Barker mic. He had a Bob Barker mic about that big from The Price is Right. And uh, I used to sing this song. And it's so, so, so powerful. It says, my God is real. And PJ really likes this song because the, uh, the country singer, the soul singer, comes up out of me when I sing this song. And, and that's the only way... You can sing it, and I've been singing it that way all my life. So uh, just enjoy this song. I think the are the lyrics up. Okay, they're not. So, um, but if you know it, sing along with us right now. There are some things I may not know. There are some places. 
where I cannot go but this one thing you like that yeah. I surely know my God is real for I can feel him in my soul my God is real my God is real so very real in my soul he is real in my soul my God is real for he has watched and made me whole his love for me his love for me is like your gold it's like your gold my God is real for I can feel him in my soul try that with us with us my God is real my God is real so very real in my soul He's real in my soul my God is real for he has washed and made me whole his love for me his love for me is like your gold yeah my God is real for I can feel him in my soul some folks may doubt some folks may scorn some folks may desert me and leave me all alone but as for me I'll take God's part for God he is real and I can feel him in my heart my God is real my God is real so very real in my soul he's real in my soul my God is real for he has washed and made me whole his love for me his love for me is like your gold yeah, my God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. I cannot tell just how you fell when Jesus came and took all your sins away. But since that day, oh, since that hour, I know he's real, for I can feel his holy power. My God is real. My God is real. So very real in my soul. My God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. Yeah, my God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Real in my soul. Yes, 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 yes. My God is real. Hallelujah. My God is real. And I thank you, God, that you are God above all. There's nothing that is more powerful than our great God. 
There's nothing that can come against his people that will prevail when you've got God on your side. How many know that God is real in your life today? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Whitney, for joining us, and thank you for all of your help here. Uh, Would you put your hands together for our early team that gets here early every Sunday, our tech crew, our setup crew, most of our deacons were here early this morning, and we don't ever want you to feel taken for granted or taken advantage um, even in a, in a smaller congregation, it takes a lot of work to bring things together. And uh, I was, this morning, I was getting ready, and my phone kept dinging, kept dinging, kept dinging. I said, what is going on? Somebody is at the church. And there was PJ, bright and early this morning, getting things ready for the fellowship and getting... We have, a, um, we have a volunteer station in our lounge in here, and just a, a little token to say thank you to our deacons and to our setup crew, our safety team, and there's a Keurig in there, and K-cups, and protein bars, and microwavable sandwiches, and I, you know, this just dawned on me, I haven't had one cup of coffee out of there, I haven't had one... Um, uh, breakfast sandwich, and so today's your day. Today's my day, <laughs> but you know, every week I'm thinking about James. I'm thinking about Ben, and a lot of Sunday mornings I said, "Ben, have you had breakfast yet?" And he goes, "No, Pastor G, just working hard." Ben, I love you. I honor you for all the work that you do in this ministry. I'm telling you, nothing would move in this ministry if it wasn't for Benjamin <laughs> Cheeseman. God bless you, man. And now Amanda has joined his team, and we've got some more work to do in that team. And Michaela was helping us here today. We're getting everything online. Yep. All Our engineer was here this week wiring in, and there's all kinds of components that I don't even want to know how those things work. And, you know, years ago when PJ and I started this ministry, we used to do everything. We did all the mowing, all the lawn, all the... Uh, what do you call that white stuff? Snow, Snow. removal. Yeah, what do you call that white stuff? <laughs> and clean the church and lead worship and everything. We began to build our sound system. But, you know, today, I don't even know how to turn on this sound system. That's true. <laughs> I don't even know how to turn on those lights or any of that stuff. And, and I love it until I get here and, you know, I want to show off the building to some of our friends. And so I know how to do those lights. And I know how to do these side lights. But... I want to just give thank you and give honor to the folks that make this place ready for all of us to come here and worship. Doesn't this place look beautiful? Yeah. Praise God. Thank God for this. And we're going to have a wonderful time of celebration. We want you all to be a part of it. And it's going to need a few hands to make things uh, work well. Um, the food is catered. Scott Fadden is our caterer. For the main meal that'll happen, that'll happen. That's a ticketed event um, for that Saturday night. And uh, we're going to have an open house for everyone at 3 o'clock. There will be sandwiches and all kinds of goodies, maybe some cake and punch or stuff. And then we're going to invite folks to come in here. We want to pack the place for that beautiful time. We have some guest musicians that are come and lead us, that will come and lead us in worship. And then we are going to ask those of you that would like to, to sit in front of the camera and we're going to record a brief video testimony and then we'll put that into a collage of testimonies that everybody can see so that you don't have to come up here and actually hold the mic. It'll, I think it'll be less nervous and that is my time up. I think so. <laughs> Yeah, that's another song we sing, isn't it? The chimes of time ring out the news. Yeah, that must be Trinity, I think. Trinity Lutheran, maybe, ringing the bells. But anyhow, um, we, we want to make it just as comfortable for you. And um, so we'll get you in front of a camera. 
then we have someone that's going to work with us that'll put all that together and we'll put those through the program during that day. The program will start at four. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it'll go to about 545 and then <clears throat> we'll have a meal together. And then on that, that next Sunday morning, Bishop and Pastora Salas, all the way from Escondido, are going to be preaching the word of God. We'll have a time of worship. And so that service is going to go a little bit longer. It'll go from like 1030 to 1230. And so we want you to be prepared for that because we want to give as much time for Bishop to preach and then to pray and prophesy over people. And if, if you have not yet been able to be in a service with Bishop and Pastora, it's absolutely life changing. Yeah. It's absolutely life changing. Amen. So we're out just a few weeks now and we need your help. We want you on a team. And so um, we're going to be going downstairs for a meal. And so this is our next level of team <coughs> building in our congregation. And so we're looking forward to that. So PJ, would you um, just run us through some, some of our like tips of the iceberg um, announcements and uh, yeah, I think we'll receive our giving at the end of the service because I want to get right into the word now. The, last week we had so many announcements in the service that I just completely forgot to receive the offering. But thank God for you, thank, thank God you. for thank you, you and that people. beautiful giving yes. station back there in the back. So as we wrap up our service today, you can walk right through and. Put your, your offerings and tithes in that giving station. If you're online, you can do that now. We welcome. Would you just give a big God bless you to those that are joining us online. God bless you. We love you. God bless you. We love, love you with all of our hearts. We wish you were here with us, but we bless you today. And those of you online, you can go to your phones. You can go to your computers, to your smart devices and give there. And the prompts are on this service. God bless you, PJ. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome here in the building and online. We welcome our SoCal Connect Fellowship, who's joining us today. And uh, we invite you to like and follow our Facebook page and to like and share this video to spread the word. We also invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Grace Christian Church with Pastor G and PJ. And today is Breakthrough Ministries Sunday, so the team will be leaving at 3.30 today. You know who you if are. invited to be on our team to go with us. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to go, please let Pastor G know. Uh, also, so this week, Wednesday the 21st at noon and 6.30 p.m. will be a Naloxone Access Point Information Meeting, um, both here, or it'll be in the Fellowship Hall. So we'll have some food available. So please let us know by tomorrow if you're planning to come. Uh, Wednesday at noon. And we lost our slides. That's okay. So Wednesday at noon and 6.30. Uh, also beginning this Friday from 1 to 5, we're going to be starting our naloxone access point availability here and in the church building through the white side door. Uh, from 1 to 5 on Fridays. On Friday next week, the 30th, we're super excited to have a pizza party at the skate park for the kids there. And we'll be getting the word out about that and have some fabulous prizes. If you are willing and able to help, let us know. Yeah, we have a brand new skateboard store in Albert Lee. Um, the owner there is Jessica Craig. And I called her just to invite her to the event. I said, I'm not asking you for anything. I know you're shop is brand new and you probably have every church and nonprofit and fundraiser asking you for stuff. I said, I'm probably the only preacher that will not ask you for anything, but I'm inviting you to come because you are our, our wonderful new skateboard uh, business in Albert Lee. And I want you to come and meet the young people. She said, Pastor G, I've been hearing about you and PJ and I'm going to build a custom board and bring it, and you can just give it away nice at that, that right? event. We're so excited about that. We're so excited about that because, you know, young people won't always come to church. They won't always seek out good, godly mentors. They're going to hang out where, where they feel wanted, where they feel um, welcomed, where nobody's going to judge them or, you know, condemn them. Yeah. And so I am calling upon every parent, grandparent, 
leader, elected official, pastor, youth pastor, everybody in this community to join with me and PJ. And, you know, we, we hear a lot of stuff about the bad north lot. That's where all the bad stuff goes on. Well, you know what? Either we can be, we can complain about it or we can show up and try to make a difference. So PJ and I have actually been driving and patrolling the north lot. And then we heard about the Brookside boat landing and, you know, everybody's smoking weed and everybody's taking pills and everybody's doing this. So that just sounds like an area where I think me and PJ ought to be. That's right. Amen. Everybody amen. say amen. amen. Yeah. So um, we've been going and now they know our vehicles and now they know who we are. And so when we drive up, we hear this, hey, PJ, PG. Good to see you. One dude even had a megaphone, and he was saying, Pastor G's in the house. He was talking <laughs> to the mic, and that's said, Pastor G's on the lot. Pastor G's on the lot. I don't know if that meant hide your weed or what it meant, but whatever, you know. And, and so <laughs> we were talking with one of our elected officials, and uh, we ran into him. We prayed with him, and he said, I said, we've been up there building relationships. He said, why don't you see if they can clean up all their trash? And so we said, okay. So we went back and uh, we said, hey, guys, you know we love you. We don't want you to die. We want you to live. So be careful with your choices and your friends. And this. We were just talking with them, letting them know we love them. And then at the end I said, and would you do us a favor? Sure, anything for you, Pastor G. I said, would you just make sure all the cans and trash is cleaned up? And, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll clean up all the litter. They gave us their word, and I went back the next day, and the north lot was clean. Let me tell you something. There's a lot to be said about going and meeting people, and young people are no different. You show them respect, and most young people will immediately show you respect right now. And so uh, it's just been such a beautiful time. We've done this about three or four times as we prayer drive the city. So I want to invite you to any night of the week, just drive up to the north lot and walk around or talk to people. I mean, because we've got to do something in this community to save lives because our young people yes. Yes. are dying. They are dying. Yes. We've had over five overdoses in the past month and two resulted in deaths. And so this naloxone access point, a lot of people may not agree with it, and that's okay. We don't need everybody to agree with everything that we do. We're just following after the Lord and trying to meet addicts exactly where they're at because you cannot get a dead addict to treatment. That's not going to happen. Right. So we're trying to reach people right where they're at. We're going to have a drug counselor here and all they have to do is walk in that side door they can talk to somebody they can receive prayer they can receive a naloxone kit and we know we know that at least three lives have been saved because of naloxone just in the past 40 days three lives have been saved by this and so we're starting with um, information we're going to be answering several questions at the meeting. PJ and I will be there. We're going to have some drug, some chemical dependency professionals, and uh, we'll, we'll answer questions. We're going to provide food and drinks at 12, and then again at 6.30. And then from there, we're going to gauge the interest of our community about hosting naloxone training, how a person would administer naloxone with somebody that's in the midst of an opioid um, overdose. And so I know that the, this is mucky, and I know that this is uncomfortable for many people, but we're not talking about Minneapolis. We're not talking about Chicago. We're not talking about L.A. or San Diego. We're talking about Albert Lee, Minnesota, where drug addiction has hit us very, very, very hard. And sometimes people don't take it um, seriously until you have a member of your family that has overdosed or has died. And we don't want that to happen in this community. And PJ and I, in our 30th year of ministry, we are determined by the grace of God to do everything yeah. that we can.
to reach people. Amen. It weighs so heavily, heavily on my heart. <laughs> I just want us to stop and pray right here. Father, in the name of Jesus, Thank you, Lord. in this human realm, Lord, we need you so desperately right yes. now. Yes, yes. And we need you to give us the ideas and we need you to give us the influence and we need you to put the resources in our hands, God. And we need the right people on our teams, God, to yes. step forward and say, I may not know anything about drug addiction or alcoholism or any of these things that are affecting people, but I, I love people right. and I want people to live. And so, God, yes. we're just praying for the community of Albert Lee. Yes. We're praying for yes. southern Minnesota and northern Iowa and all of the families yes. and individuals, God, that have been hit with this. And we yes. pray the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. and we pray the blood of Jesus, yes. and we pray that you would send forth your mighty angels, dear God, with healing and the yes. message of salvation, yes. and we pray that you would send forth passionate, mm -hmm. loving, compassionate people, yes. Lord, yes. to join with me and PJ yes. as we seek to effect positive change mm -hmm. in this community, yes. in the name of Jesus. Let everybody say amen. Amen. Right. So on to our celebration weekend. The first event will, for, of that weekend, everyone's invited to the outlet on Broadway uh, from 10 a.m. till noon. We'll have a light brunch served, um, and it will also be an open house baby shower for our daughter Susie and her husband Robbie. And uh, you're welcome to bring a card if you like, but everyone's available. Or everyone's invited. It's co-ed, uh, not just ladies. So it's Everybody, you're welcome to come and bring a card for them if you like. And then for our 30th anniversary um, public services, we have on uh, Saturday the 29th, bless you, we're going to have an open house with refreshments starting at 3, as Pastor G was saying. And then the celebration service will start at 4 p.m. right here. And then... Um, the following Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m., we'll have our worship service with Bishop Salas. And the next screen. And so uh, we're really excited that we're going to be having our special celebratory dinner. And so that will be for all of our active members and for our special ministry guests. Uh, it will be a ticketed event. So um, we'll need an RSVP by October 9th because we want to be sure we are able to uh, get as many people into the fellowship hall as we can for a great time together. And that will be 6 o'clock on that Saturday. All right, what's next there, Benjamin? So in order to um, make all this fun stuff happen, uh, if everyone can please sign up for a team. Uh, as Pastor G was talking a little bit about, the sign-up sheets are in the back, but we will also be speaking more about them over uh, lunchtime. So there's going to be a hospitality team which will be handling the greeting, the ushering, serving, and then coordinating meals for our special guests. There'll be a logistics team, which will be handling the decorations of the events and then the setup and teardown. And then there'll be the media communication teams, which will help to put together testimonies, maybe do the photography videos, maybe work on a slideshow and help with promotion and RSVPs. So today at noon, everyone's invited. There'll be plenty of food downstairs uh, for our potluck, uh, some sandwiches and salads after service. All right. Good job. All right, let's turn to the word of the Lord today. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. We've been on this new mini-series called We Must Come to Ourselves. And today, um, it, this, this is some great, great information for you today. I'm so excited about it. Acts chapter 12, we're going to read one verse, and then I'm going to unpack this chapter for you. Praise God. Are you ready for some good preaching? Yeah. All right. Acts chapter 12 and verse 11. Then Peter came to himself. Then Peter came to to himself and said, now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel. Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches 
and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel. And when the Lord sent his angel, he rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen to me. What is my title today? We must wake up. We must wake up to the angelic realm. We must wake up to the angelic realm. Let's pray. Precious Father, I thank you that you have called me to be a gospel preacher. You have called me to declare the goodness of God, the saving, healing, delivering power of God that comes into our lives when we are born again, when we become saved, when we become spirit-filled believers. And today, God, you have sent me and PJ to wake up the church, to wake up the church to the angelic realm of God. Help me do that today, Lord. Anoint my mind and my lips, God, to preach this word as you have put it in my heart. I give you praise today in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So I believe inside of every single one of us, God puts a desire to be awakened spiritually. God puts his desire to be awakened spiritually. If you go back to the book of Genesis where everything began by the word of God, the Bible says that in the beginning, God, created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form, it was empty, and catch this, darkness covered the face of the deep. That darkness was Satan and his demonic fallen angels. I don't have the time this morning to break out theologically and doctrinally for you this morning of where Lucifer became Satan and fallen angels became demons. But they were cast out of heaven and they were banished to the earth. And prior to creation and prior to the formation of the animal kingdom and the human kingdom, Satan and his demons were the darkness that covered the face of the earth. If you ever wondered where did that darkness come from? What was that darkness? What caused that darkness? This is what it was. It was Satan, who the Bible calls the prince of darkness, and his fallen angels. Their presence created an atmosphere of darkness over the empty planet called Earth. Now, let me just give you a very practical analogy. Have you ever encountered somebody that just feels like there is darkness emanating from them. They make your skin crawl. They make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. They are just carrying something that is opposite. If you are a born-again believer, they are carrying spirits that are opposite of your spirits. Years ago, uh, when we were first renovating this building... 30 years ago, I would work all night in this building. I had rented some scaffolding, and I was painting and plastering and tearing things out and fixing up this building. And then about 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning, I would go to the old truck stop, which is now where Green Mill is and Casey's and um, Country Inn and Suites. That was the old Oli's truck stop. And I would go there for breakfast. And one morning I came in, and a young man had been working with me. And we walked in. We were very, very tired. And I just, I, we didn't have any money in those days, but I had a little bit of money that I could bless him for working with me. And I said, let's go have some breakfast. And we walked in, and 
we were greeted by a server that had a coffee pot in her hand. And when I met this server, I'll never forget it as long as I live, we were like two magnets repelling. If you've ever taken two magnets and tried to put them together, they just repel. They jump away from each other. They depart in opposite directions. And when I encountered this young lady, whatever was inside of her did not like what was inside of me. And I recognized it and she recognized it. Now, years later, we were called to their home because this young lady was involved in witchcraft and she had been taught the craft by her aunt who was the leader of a ladies' quilting service quilting circle at a church here in Albert Lee. There was witchcraft being practiced in this lady's quilting circle, and this young lady grew up at the knee of her aunt, who was a witch. And, and I found this out because when we came back from Africa, we received this call that they were levitating things and moving paintings on the wall and they were conjuring demons in their home. This was down in the area by Hardy's down there in that area, the south side of Albert Lee. And I took one of our deacons with me who did not believe in any of this stuff. His, his theological and his doctrinal background, his flavor of Christianity did not teach about angels or demons. And so I thought, what a great a teaching moment to take this deacon with me. And I, I didn't let him know everything that was going on, but I said, we're going to go deal with some witchcrafts and stuff and some demonic activity. And he was pretty excited about going with me. And we spent eight hours at this home. No furniture in the home. We all sat on the floor. And I brought my bottle of olive oil, which I used to pray for people's homes. There's nothing magical about the olive oil. Just... From a scriptural standpoint, it represents the Holy Spirit. And so we went and we sat on the floor and I began to interview these people about what was happening. And all of a sudden, this young lady's face began to mutate right in front of me. It turned to like the face of a cat. And as I was speaking to her, these demons that were inside of her began to manifest. There were some times that her voice was very deep and grovelly. There was at one point where she said, you know, on, on December 25th, your wife had a miscarriage. And she began to talk to us about our church. Your church has a tree across the street, and all of these blackbirds hover in that tree. And she talked about, I have walked around your church building as a cat. She said, I have an alter ego. That is my spirit animal, and I can turn into a cat, and I've walked all around your church property. And at this point, I said, lady, you need to shut your mouth right now because you're the one that has the demonic problems in your life, and there has been death and evil show up in your home, and you've called me because you believe that because of who I carry, the Lord Jesus Christ said, we have power over that demonic realm. I'm not going to let you speak into my life. And so this took about eight hours, and we went through every area of their home, and we prayed. And then I said to her, I said, you need to be delivered of these things that you have allowed to come into your body and into your home and into your children and I'm commanding you in the name of Jesus to repent. I'm commanding you in the name of Jesus to renounce and to denounce every evil that you have opened the door to allow into your life. And as we begin to pray for her, I'm telling you, it was like a movie. And periodically I'd check out the deacon and you know, see his eyes uh, bugging out. And, but you know he got on board and he began to pray with me. And we delivered that woman of all of those fallen angels that had entered into her body. Now you're not going to hear this taught 
at most Christian churches, especially in America. But when you get off of the mainland and you go to Mexico or you go to Jamaica or you go to Africa or you go to various places of Asia and and Europe, uh, we've not been to Asia yet, but most of those places we have been that I've told you, this is a regular thing that people encounter. And somehow in America and in Western civilization, we think that's just Hollywood or that's, that's just uh, the movie realm. But I'm telling you, people create things in the movie realm that they have seen in the demonic realm. And there are people that create good feeling movies and movies that move your attention and uh, things like Touched by an Angel and various movies like that because they've experienced the angelic realm of light. And so I want you to be aware of this. The Apostle Paul wrote many times that believers should not be ignorant of the times in which we live and the spirits in which we are are encountering. So I want you to know that there's a kingdom of light and there's a kingdom of darkness that are simultaneously cohabitating and the Bible says in the book of Ephesians that we do not wrestle we do not fight against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this present world and against spiritual wickedness in high places we need to be aware of that but more than I want you to be aware of the realm of darkness, by the way, I, I caution that lady, don't ever go back to this witchcraft. Don't go to people that read your palm or tea leaves. Don't go to any shaman. Don't go to any guided service where people are calling on your spirit to come out of your body for out-of-body experiences. Do not go to psychics. Do not... Uh, read the horoscope, stay away from all of that stuff because it comes out of the demonic realm. So let me just answer this. Should Christians be reading their horoscope? Let me, short answer is no. Should believers be going to people who can conjure up the dead and get you in touch with your dead mother or dead father or grandpa or grandmother just because you are so broken and so hurting that you're longing for that desire? The short answer is no. Should Christians be going to things where uh, people are guiding your spirit as you pray through spheres or labyrinths? The short answer is no, because all of that stuff has its roots in demonic realms, angels uh, and demons of the kingdom of darkness. So the short answer is no. And that's not because it's a legalistic thing or I'm trying to control your life. But as a shepherd, I want you to remember, David said about the Lord is my shepherd. He said this, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod was for the wolves, for the bears, for the coyotes, for those wild beasts that would come and attack the sheep. That's what the rod was for. And David knew that as a shepherd, he had to carry this club in order to fight and protect the sheep. But the staff, that was that that walking stick with a hook, that was for the sheep because sometimes sheep can can fall into attention deficit disorder. Sometimes sheep can wander off because of a smell or an interest. And sometimes they get down and stuck in a ravine or a chasm or deep within a, a rocky place. And the shepherd can't get all the way down there without risking both of their lives. So he has this long uh, staff with a hook on it so that he can actually hook that sheep and bring them up out of danger. So I need you to know that PJ and I take our calling as shepherds 
very, very seriously. We love to preach encouraging messages to you that just light your fire and encourage you. But we also have to bring messages of warning and caution because the enemy is very crafty. He is very wily. And that first statement that I made to you that innately installed in us by God's hand is a desire to be awakened to the supernatural. And I want you to know, there are so many dead, dry, dull, lifeless churches and ministries on the continent of America and in the Western Hemisphere that sometimes the young people of the church, they get bored when they come. There's no life there. There's no interest there. So that awakening that God has put within them, the enemy and demons step in from the demonic realm and they begin to pull on that desire. And so kids are pulled away by movies. Think about the movies like the Twilight series and think about the hash and slash movies when we we used to have 80 kids in our Friday night youth ministry before we hit some trouble in our church in 2013 and when we would ask the kids we would survey the kids what kind of movies do you want to watch we want to watch Chucky we want to watch Halloween we want to watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre why is it that children and young people and people are pulled in that direction because the enemy has stepped in and he's trying to meet an awakening that God has put inside of every single one of his created beings. And he steps in and with that he brings fear and he brings anxiety and he brings worry and he brings panic and he brings nightmares. The enemy also uses music, violent music, music that has every foul word that you can think about it. And it's about killing and murder and raping and domination and all of this. And all of those things are rooted in the kingdom of darkness. And we have to be aware of that. Addictions in our life, those come from wanting to be awakened to the spiritual realm, to the supernatural realms. I can't tell you how many people that we have prayed for and counseled and sought to see them get saved and born again that are still terrorized by by the nightmares and the terrors that they have had because of an LSD trip or an acidic trip or something that they have ingested in their body. And I want you to know the enemy is very crafty. He's very wily. But here's the good news. God has the kingdom of light. And that kingdom of light is all powerful. It is all powerful. Now, in the book of Revelation chapter 12, you will read about a war that took place in heaven. And the Bible says that the great dragon fought and Michael and his angels fought back. And that great dragon and his angels were not strong enough. Hear that. That great dragon and those angels were not strong enough. Therefore, they lost their place in heaven. And the Bible says that the great dragon swiped his tail and he took with him one third of the stars of God. So this great dragon is Satan himself and he swipes his tail during this time of war and he steals one third of God's angels now you might go into a train of thought of well if God is all powerful how come he couldn't protect his angels it's apparent to me that God as he has given free will and choice to us as human creatures he also gave that choice to his angels Angels are not robots, neither does God want us to be robots. If you desire to serve the Lord, God's going to help facilitate that. But also, you must understand that there are going to be some people that say, no, I don't want anything to do with God. I don't want anything to do with holiness. I don't want anything to do with godliness. I don't believe in
believe in God. Don't talk to me about God. And I want you to know that those people will actually seal their own fate by their rejection of God. I want you to know this, that God does not send anybody to hell. If anybody will spend eternity in hell away from the presence of God, it will be because of their decision to reject God and His goodness and His salvation. I know this is getting deep for some of you, but this is what we have to know in these hours. Now, I want you to know, in the home that I was raised in, it wasn't your typical American Christian home. The home where I was raised, we read the Bible every day. We worshiped together every day. Prayer and fasting, every Wednesday was our fast day. And yes, even us in elementary school and, and, and uh, middle school and high school, we would fast and then we would go to church on Wednesday night. And after that service, we would break our meal together. This was a normal regiment of our lives. And angels were something that were talked about all the time in our life. There were times that my father would wake us up in the middle of the night and he would say, I just want to call the family to prayer because the angel of the Lord was in our home tonight. There were times when my father would wake us up and he would say, the enemy was trying to come against us and he would freak me out when I was a little boy and he'd say, gee, George, you better watch yourself. The enemy wants to have you. He wants to sift you as wheat. But then he would comfort my heart and he would say, but as your dad, I've been praying for you. As your mom right here, she's been praying for you and we're going to pray for you. That was regular worship in our home. We were aware of the angelic realm. My grandfather was the most powerful man of God that I've ever encountered in his life, in my life. And I would come to my grandparents' home and we would have food together and my grandfather would tell stories of his angel coming into his room and poking him in the side. That meant it's time to get up and pray. And my grandfather would say many times I just wanted to roll away and not have the angel poke me in the side. And he said the angel would go to my, to my foot and he would pull my toe. He would pull my toe. And as a child, I was intrigued by this. And, and I would say, Grandpa, what would you do? He'd say, I'd get up and I'd pray because the angel of the Lord had visited me. He had laid nations on my heart. He had laid world leaders on my heart. He had laid preachers on my heart. And my grandfather's son, Eddie Munoz, who was my favorite uncle, became addicted to heroin at the age of 14 years old. And my grandfather would say, last night, Grandma and I spent all night laying on our face, crying out to God that he would save our son, Eduardo, Eddie. They would pray for him. There would be months that would go by that they wouldn't hear from their son, knowing that he was living in the streets, knowing that he was stealing and robbing and praying that he wouldn't die of overdose and praying that he wouldn't get shot in the midst of a robbery and things like this. And I just grew up with this realm of the angelic where grandpa and grandma would say, we prayed and we asked the Lord to send his angels to save these people. Countries where they had preached, they would call upon on God to send his angels. And what am I saying to you today? What is the purpose of this message? I have come as the servant of the Lord into your life today, pleading with you. We must wake up today as the church. We must wake up. We must become awakened to this angelic realm that God has given to us as his people. Just on the other side of that wall is the lounge. We used to call it the apartment, and that's where PJ and myself brought our first child, Elisha, into this building. He was three weeks old, and we settled home in that place. And then, you know, we got him a big boy bed, and we moved him into the bedroom. And you know parents, as it goes, you put them in their big kid bed, and by the time you get back to your bed, they're there. And Elisha was no different. I think Susie was, Susie was born by this time. She was in her crib in the middle room. 
And I was laying in bed and Elisha would bring his blankets and his pillow. And he would lay on this side between the wall. I, I, I was sleeping on that. So usually I sleep where the door is. But we had so many bats in those days. PJ had to protect me from the bats. So she would sleep on the door side and I would sleep on the wall side. And one night I woke up. I feel the presence of the Lord here so strongly. I woke up and there was an angel standing in our room. And he looked like an ice sculpture. He was translucent and transparent, but like these blue lights, there was like a blue light emanating from him. And he was as tall as the ceiling. And it frightened me. It frightened me. In those days in our ministry, PJ and I would work all day and the spiritual darkness was trying to crush us. It was trying to destroy us. It was trying to get us to run from this community. I can't tell you how many times PJ and I have been so discouraged, so depressed that we just said, let's just pack whatever we can in our trunk and let's just leave. Let's just run from here. Let's just disappear. And I just felt something release in the spirit realm right there. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. The pressures of life get so heavy. You get so weary in your well-doing that you just say, I will leave from, I will run from this place with the clothes on my back. I will just run from this place. And PJ and I have, have had seasons of those times. And so PJ would put the kids to bed and I would come in here and I would lay on this altar right here and I would cry out to God all throughout the night. One year the Lord said, we used to have this rickety old wood pulpit. The Lord said, I want you to pray with your head inside of that pulpit for one year. And I did it in obedience to the Lord. I would put my my pillow in there and I would pray in there many times all night and one of those nights I had gone to bed it was very late I was so burdened for our community I was begging God that he would help this church grow and people to get saved and for God to bring workers to work with us and I wake up and here is this crystal figure standing in our room it looked a lot like this just sculptured I could see him like this and his wings and his hair, he just looked like an ice sculpture. So in my fright, I elbowed PJ like this. I said, the, 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 there's an angel. And here's what she did. Uh-huh. And then went right back to sleeping. And the next morning, and Elisha was on the floor. And the next morning at breakfast, I said, I said, babe, you weren't frightened by the angel? She said, no. Why were you afraid? And I immediately, my preacher mind began to flip through the scriptures in my head. And I said, okay, I don't know. How come the shepherds, when the angels of the Lord came to announce the birth of Jesus, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord showed up and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. And then a company of the heavenly angels were there. And here's what the Bible says. The shepherds were sore afraid. I said, I don't know. Why were the shepherds afraid? And she went, mm, went back to her Fruit Loops and her, and her coffee or whatever she was eating that morning. But I could watch the intrigue of our kids. Then the next night, we went to bed again. And there was the angel again. And I gave PJ that elbow. I said, there's the, that's as far as I got. And Elisha, clear as a bell, he's about four Maybe not quite five. He said, what? The angel? I said, Elisha, you see him? He said, he's been there the past four nights. <laughs> Parents, I want you to know that your children are very, very sensitive to the spiritual realm. Your pets are also very sensitive to the spiritual realm. Our little doggy, um, Rusty, was with us. Eight, 18 and a half years. I used to call him the dog of the Lord. Now I call Hawkin the dog of the Lord. But Rusty, you know, we didn't have a great relationship. Um, but, you know, it was kind of like at night I would give him all the love. You know, oh, Rusty, I love you and you're the dog of the Lord, you know. And one thing about Rusty was as I was praying... I would be crying out to the Lord and Rusty would come and he would just nestle right at my feet. 
And I'd reach back and I'd say, oh, you're the dog of the Lord. You're praying with me tonight. And there were several times that Rusty would just stand up on all fours like this and his ears in the air like this. And he was focused on something that I could not see. And I would say, Rusty, are you seeing the angel of the Lord? What are you seeing? There would be times I would be sickened in my bed and I would be praying and telling God, God, I, I can't afford to die. I know I'm not going to die because there's too much prophetic uh, uh, word that hasn't been fulfilled yet in my life. And Rusty would stand up and he would just look. He would never growl, but he just looked regal at that point. I believe that he was seeing something that was visiting our home. And I want you to know, parents, you need to know this. Grandparents, you need to know this. Your children and your pets many times can be more sensitive to what you as an adult are experiencing. I'm trying to awaken somebody here today. Now, let me get to my verses, and I'm going to finish in the next few minutes. We get to this book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, Actions of the Apostles, and people are being healed, and people are being saved. Thousands of people are being saved in a single day, and the church is growing. And when that begins to happen, the kingdom of darkness is awakened to the fire that has been birthed in the church. And this evil King Herod, who I believe was filled with demons, he began to persecute members of the church. Not everybody, but certain members of the church. And he went after those that were a threat to the kingdom of darkness. And he had James, the apostle, seized and they killed him with the sword. That was a very quick execution. The church was alarmed by this. They didn't know what to do. But Peter was in a different situation. And the, the scriptural commentator, Matthew Henry, says this. He said, the church didn't have time to pray when James was executed. But then we get to this guy named Peter. And the Bible says, when Herod saw that it pleased the people that he executed James, he called for the arrest of Peter. And so he seized Peter and he arrested him and had him put into prison. Now we see a delay in this court case. We see a delay in this process. No delay in James's execution. So the church was just shocked. We didn't know what to do. We, we didn't have time to pray. But then God gives the church an opportunity to enter into the angelic realm because their leader has been seized. He's been put into jail. And the Bible says when Peter was put in prison, the church began to pray. Let me tell you the easiest way to become awakened to God's angelic realm is to begin to pray. Begin to pray like you've never prayed before. I'm not talking about little patty cake prayers of now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I'm talking about prayers that put the devil and every demon on high alert. I'm talking about prayers that will open the gates of heaven and will put the gates of hell on absolute lockdown. That's where God is calling the church to be awakened right now. And we must become fully awake that God has sent his angels as ministers and he has sent his angels as warriors and guardians of his people. And when the people of God begin to pray, heaven is motivated and hell is agitated. And so they put this good man in jail. Two sets of chains on his hands. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Two sets of chains on his hands. Two sets of chains on his feet. Two guards on either side. Two, actually, two sets of guards on either side in a cell behind two gates. I'm here to tell you today, all of the nation was afraid of this one spirit-filled believer. And all of hell wanted to destroy him. But because the church was praying, the Bible says, and God sent his angel. God sent his angel. And the Bible says that a great light appeared. 
And do you know something funny? That the man of God did not awake when all the lights turned off. So the angel, like he used to do with my grandfather, he poked the believer in the side. He poked him. He said, it's time to wake up. And he said, get your clothes on. Get your shoes on because we're leaving this place. And immediately the man of God wakes up out of this groggy sleep, which is so amazing to me because here he's double chained on the hands, double chained on the feet, in between these two sets of guards, in this uh, double cell uh, behind two gates here. And the dude was able to sleep. I would think I'd be awake complaining or worrying or something, but he was asleep. But the church was praying, and the angel came to him, and he said, Get up. Get your clothes on. Get your shoes on. I'm here to tell you today, not only did they chain him, not only did they guard him, but they de- they dehumanized him. They stripped him down naked. He wasn't allowed any clothes. Let me tell you something. The Bible says that the enemy comes to steal kill and to destroy and I am preaching to some believers here today that have been under such attack of the kingdom of darkness that it feels like it has chained you it feels like they're guarding you it feels like you're in bondage and you're just naked with everything hanging out in front of everybody to see but I'm here to tell you today God has sent you this preacher to give you this word of hope that the church has been praying for you And God is sending his angels in this season. Hallelujah. So the guy gets up. All the chains fall off. All the gates open. They walk all the way out through. And now they're outside. And they get a block away. And the angel departs. And it was at this point that Peter comes to himself. What those words mean in this particular instance is that he was fully awakened. Do you know I believe that we have some Christian believers that have become asleep in their faith. They have become asleep to the beautiful supernatural realm that God has made fully available to us. And so we just take the problems of life as well. My life is just rough right now. You might be under demonic attack. Right now, the enemy, Satan and his fallen angels might be coming to you and saying, we're just going to chain you up. We're just going to put you on lockdown. We're going to strip you down and shame you. On the other hand, you might just be experiencing natural consequences of bad decisions. Not every bad thing that happens in your life can be rooted to the devil or rooted to God testing you. I'm under attack or God's testing me. Some things happen just because of bad decisions that we're making in our life. And we need to be very spiritually discerning about what is happening in our lives. Can you say amen? Amen. Babe, let's go down there so we can wrap up this beautiful message. Are you learning something today? Hallelujah. So, the man of God, a spirit-filled believer, and if you read about his life, you're going to read that he was so powerful that his shadow healed people and took demons out of people. But he was seized by the kingdom of darkness, and God sent his angel because the people were praying. And then, the angel leaves him, and he's a block away from the jail, and the Bible says... Peter came to himself. He was fully awake, and he says this. I realize that this was not a dream. I realize this was not a vision. I'm actually living in this. This is the purpose of my message today, is bring you, to bring you to the awakening that God has a supernatural realm that should be operating in our lives every day in our lives every day in our lives you can pray and say God I'm asking you to send your angels to protect my children I'm asking you to protect my husband as he goes to work my wife as she goes to work I'm asking you because now we're in the realm where we have to be concerned about school shootings and we have to be concerned about mass shootings we have to be concerned about that 
We actually have to have conversations about having more resource officers in the school and having teachers armed and things like this. And there are those that want to just take away everybody's guns. We are now in that season right now where we have to be awakened to God's angelic realm that we can pray and we can say, God, when I send my kids to school, I'm asking that the angels of God go with them and make them visible if necessary. Let their teachers see it. Let any shooter that would come into our school be stopped by the angels of the Lord. And you might think, Pastor G, you've lost your mind. No, I've been reading my Bible and I've been reading the reality where you and I should be living. If you have children and grandchildren that are addicted or they've been doing drugs or alcohol or things like that or they're going to people that are older than them and say, hey, can you buy me some liquor? You should be praying, God, put your angel right there to bumper them, to guardrail them, to stand between them and evil. I'm telling you, when believers come under attack, the church must begin to pray because when the church begins to pray, God sends his angels. And so this believer, this man of God, shook himself. He said, hey, this is not a dream. This is the reality that I am in. And he says, I know assuredly that God has sent his angel. And here's what the angel was sent to do. That angel was sent to rescue me. He, sent, he was sent to deliver me from those chains, to break me out of that prison where nobody else could stop it. And I'm here to tell you today that this guy was under lockdown He was in the cell. He was pulled away from his church, his ministry, and his friends. But he could not be kept away from the angels of the Lord. Some of you that have been going through hell on earth, I'm here to tell you today, God is sending his angel to your life. God is sending his angel to your home. God is sending his angels to your family. And we're going to pray that they will be rescued. And then he said also, that he would save me from what all these evil people would hope would happen to me. Let me tell you something. Not everybody has your best interest in mind. There are some people that are hoping you will fail. There are some people that are hoping you will fall off the wagon, that you will quit church and forget God. Yes, the enemy is saved, but I'm telling you, there are wicked people on the earth that have demons working through them, and they want to see you fail. But I'm here to tell you today, PJ and I, at least PJ and I have been praying for you, and we've been asking God to send his angels to you that will rescue you from what any wicked person would hope to happen to you. Let's stand today. I know I've gone over time, but I just felt the Holy Spirit pushing me in a certain direction to awaken understanding in you. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for the preaching and the teaching of your word. I thank you, God, that your word is spirit and it is life. And I thank you, Lord, that you want to awaken us from the youngest to the eldest. You want to awaken the fire of the Holy Spirit within us. And you want to awaken a maturity of understanding of your word and the reality of the life that we can live in as believers. And I'm praying right now, Lord, that an awakening comes to every single person here today. That they never fear wickedness. That they never fear death. That they never fear what the enemy and his evil devices uh, bring and what occurs in that realm but that they become awakened to the Holy Spirit of God and they become awakened to praying like they've never before. I pray that kind of anointing. I pray that kind of wake up over this congregation today, Lord. And I'm believing that people in this room, when they are awakened by the angelic realm of God, their lives are going to begin to change. Their children and their family are going to begin to turn around, oh God. Their business is the people in which they serve and work with God. They're going to see that the angel of the Lord does encamp around those that fear him. I give you praise for this, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Just let me see your hands. Has God spoken to you today? Did God put something in your heart today? I want to awaken that hope in you. Now, those that have to leave, you can be dismissed. And those that can come down with us and get on a team and eat with us, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. And then at 3.30 today, I'm going to be leading a team to go to Breakthrough. We're going to preach. We're going to pray for people. We're going to just do the work of God And uh, I want to thank you for being with us today. I want to thank you for being good listeners to what the word that was going forth. We need this right now in this hour because we need God like never before. We love you. Go in peace. The Lord be with you. And uh, hopefully you'll come on noon at noon on Wednesday or 630. But you need to sign up by tomorrow. God bless you. Go in peace. Give one more round of applause to the Lord, will you? And then let's make our way downstairs. God